the boat. In circles, welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. Let's continue our 2023 previews and predictions. We go to Minneapolis and P.J. Flex Golden Gophers coming off a 9-4 and four campaign for the second consecutive season. In fact, Minnesota is 29-10 and 10 under P.J. Fleck in the last three full seasons, but have yet to win a Big Ten Western Division championship. And of course, their last shot to do so would be right here in 2023 before USC and UCLA invade and divisions go away. Sixth-year quarterback Tanner Morgan, who owns the all-time school record for wins as a starting quarterback with 27, is gone. But I believe Minnesota is actually upgraded. Ethan Calcumanis threw for 319 yards against Wisconsin, one of the best defenses in the conference in his final start of the regular season, as Minnesota then went on and won a bowl game. P.J. Flack undefeated in bowl participation. And I believe Minnesota is going to be better throwing the football this season with Calcumanis, despite the lack of experience, he started uh, versus a whiteout at Penn State and got some valuable playing experience. Three touchdowns, four interceptions. Of course, that ratio has to get much better. We're looking at a Minnesota program that going way back to the dark ages has not produced an NFL draft choice at quarterback since 1972. And Minnesota has not produced a first team Big Ten quarterback since... 1961. Your trivia answers are Craig Curry and Sandy Stevens. Calcumanis is definitely the more mobile of the two quarterbacks, and definitely he's going to have a strong receiving unit with a couple of uh, needed incoming transfers. We got Corey Crooms coming in from Western Michigan and also Elijah Spencer from Charlotte. The big question, of course, is going to be their adjustment to taking on much better secondary play in the Big Ten and trying to get loose and get free and gain separation against better talent at the cornerback position. Chris Aubin Bell only played three games last season before he was out for the season, but he has been one of Minnesota's best receiving targets going all the way back to 2018. Daniel Jackson, 37 catches, five touchdowns, was the number one pass receiver for the Golden Gophers in 2022. And Minnesota brags one of the best uh, tight ends in the conference in Brevin Span Ford, 42 catches and two touchdowns. Of course, Mo Ibrahim is one of the most prolific backs in the history of the Big Ten, scored over 50 touchdowns and was counted on to be the workhorse. He has moved on after gaining over 1,600 yards in 2022. But keep in mind that Minnesota's rushing success has been as much about the offensive line as it has been with the guy carrying the football. Look back to 2021. Minnesota lost its four top tailbacks, was down to its number five guy, and still churning out best rushing performances in the Big Ten week after week. Taking over for Ibrahim, you got Bryce Williams, who is the leading returning rusher, but Sean Taylor, the incoming two-time thousand-yard rusher from Western Michigan, might be the guy that gets the most carries. But, of course, Minnesota likes to run first, and keeping the standards of this rushing attack is more, I believe, about the offensive line success than who's toting the football. They lose their three interior offensive linemen, the three starters that anchored that line, including one of the best centers in the country, John Michael Schmitz, a Remington finalist. So Minnesota's going to be inexperienced up front. They only bring up back 49 career starts along an offensive line that's been bringing back anywhere from 80 to 150 starts during the P.J. Fleck era. The Minnesota defense ranked fourth in the nation in points against and number nine in yardage. Now, those statistics were helped out by a soft, I mean silky soft, non-conference schedule and also Big Ten opponents in the Western Division with less than explosive, prolific offenses. But still, this was a top-flight defensive unit missing a ton of players. The best ones coming back would be linebacker Cody Lindenberg. You got a cornerback in Justin Wally, who's a future NFL player, as is safety Tyler Newbin, one of the best in the conference. Up front, though, Minnesota's been in dire straits trying to mount a pass rush. They finished 118th in the nation in sacks last season. They got to get better, but unfortunately, they miss most of the talent they had up front last season. So will the replacements be better than the guys that did not 
get to the quarterback on a frequent basis in 2022. We shall see. So the Minnesota defense in flux, but we know that they're coached well, and we know that the scheme is sound, and we know they've got some players in the secondary that will keep up with what the Minnesota standard has been with guys like Antoine Winfield Jr. in recent years. Let's look at the Minnesota schedule and an interesting date non-conference here early season. Before that trip to Carolina, it all starts on a Thursday night at home against Nebraska. Right out of the gate, a key Big Ten Western Division tussle between the Huskers and the Gophers. you got to figure Minnesota's at least a 65-70% to 70% chance of winning that game. We will get to the win probabilities in just a second. Then we've got the Week 3 trip to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And in what is a severe challenge for the Minnesota defense and taking on the multifaceted Drake May, who a counted for 45 touchdowns last season, but let's not discount Minnesota, likely to be a pretty substantial underdog on the road. I'll put the toughness and the rushing attack and the rush defense in particular on Minnesota's side against a porous, porous, but talented North Carolina defense that needs to toughen up and figure it out. Basically, Minnesota's season, as it typically does with the other Western Division contenders, comes down to winning the games against the West. But this is going to be even more crucial this season because they have to play Ohio State and Michigan. That is something not facing Iowa, not facing Illinois, not facing Wisconsin. So they've got to play the two big bullies from the Big Ten Eastern Division. So it's even more crucial that they win those matchups against the likes of Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Nebraska. As we check out the most likely losses for Minnesota, they come from the two games that we just matched up. As we check out the most likely losses for the Golden Gophers, and they start with the two games that we just mentioned, Ohio State and Michigan, two of the top four to five teams in the nation, and then there's a drop-off. But the games that they must win, sure, a win at North Carolina would be nice. It would be nice for uh, the profile of the team and the program across the nation. But winning at Iowa, finally winning against the Hawkeyes, something P.J. Fleck has not done, could be the entire key to this season if the Gophers want to win the very final Big Ten Western Division Championship. Wisconsin's at home, Nebraska's at home, Illinois's at home, and Michigan State as well. So a lot of the key 50-50, 60-40 type games for Minnesota actually break at home, that could be key. They've got to beat Purdue. They've got to beat Northwestern, those without a doubt. Eastern Michigan is not going to be a pushover, nor will Louisiana. As mentioned, Minnesota's been an 8-4 and regular season team the last two years. They will take a step back based on a difficult non-conference schedule, at least for them, because they typically play no one. They've not played a difficult non-conference game since a home-and-home with TCU almost a decade ago. So it's a trip to North Carolina in which they probably have a 30% chance of winning. And then in conference, the Ohio State-Michigan trips may turn out to be the decisive factor in Minnesota failing to win a Big Ten Western Division again in 2023. Call it 7-5. and five, Call it 5-4 and four in the Big Ten for the Golden Gophers. Your comments below, your record predictions as well, we will take right here at the Voice of College Football.